Good afternoon, Good Shepherd. It's Wednesday, June 15th, 2022. And I'm here to uh, give you some updates, some announcements, and some thoughts. Um, reminder first uh, that we are in our summer schedule. Um, last week was our first uh, foray into that new uh, time frame. The uh, uh, 745 service is Zoomed. Um, and uh, the words that I got from folks who attended said that it was wonderful. So um, I, I encourage you to do that. The link will come out again in uh, the e-news tomorrow, but it's a, a roughly half hour um, from 7.45 to about 8.15. Uh, the regular service, uh, the in-person service is at nine o'clock um, in the sanctuary and uh, music and everything, the standard, standard Sunday Eucharist. Uh, with a twist, uh, as I mentioned last week, and in the e-news, um, we're doing uh, the service of morning prayer for the first part of the Eucharistic service, and then at the offertory, we shift um, and go into the, uh, the regular Holy Communion part, um, and we're using prayers from the Church of England's uh, sort of newer prayer book <laughs> called uh, Common Worship. Uh, and uh, the, again, the feedback I got last week from using that new uh, Eucharistic prayer um, was great. It has a little bit more congregational participation. Words are slightly different, um, and uh, it, it was a nice change. So that's uh, the Sunday uh, schedule. Um, this coming Sunday, uh, after the main service, so starting about 10.15, um, will be our first uh, back into faith form. We'll have a couple of uh, sessions between now and the 4th of July. Uh, sort of what I call one-offs, uh, individual standalone uh, faith forms. This coming week, we'll be talking about um, uh, making bioethical decisions. Um, what are the criteria that we use to make some decisions, uh, both in terms of the wider sort of Western philosophical, uh, medical, scientific community, but then what uh, impact does our faith have on that? So we'll and with, a, with some uh, looks at how the Episcopal Church has stood um, on some current uh, biomedical or bioethical uh, matters. So there, there's a, a brief reading, kind of fun, um, that will be linked to in the e-news. Um, if you want to read that ahead of time, there will be a, a link so that you can download a PDF of an article on um, uh, on Benjamin Button uh, and, and a twist on Benjamin Button. Uh, and if you don't know the story, take a look at the article and you'll see where that goes. Um, and then on the 29th or 26th, I keep saying 29th, on the 26th of June, uh, the uh, uh, Faith Forum will focus on uh, green burial or other uh, sort of non traditional um, ways of. Uh, uh, taking care of our physical remains after we have died. Um, and uh, the, uh, the presenter in that is a woman uh, who's an Episcopalian, uh, Marilyn McDermott, um, and uh, teaches at Warren Wilson College. It's a really, really good presentation. So we'll watch that presentation and have some discussion afterwards. So that's uh, Sunday, the 26th. The following Saturday, um, July 2nd, uh, we'll do our next altars in the world. They just, they don't have to fall on holiday weekends. These just happened to, uh, given scheduling and things like that. And we'll go to Roxborough State Park, uh, which is, um, if you have not been there before, uh, south of Littleton um, and out, out by uh, past Chatfield. And uh, we will meet um, at seven o'clock, seven o'clock, yes, yes seven o'clock in the Safeway parking lot out there, and we'll have directions for this in the e-news um, for two reasons. One is we're gonna meet there at seven um, so that we can get into the park. The parking in that at, at Roxborough State Park is limited and fills up very fast. Um, and so we wanna get in there early enough to make sure that we, we get folks in there. Um, also, uh, because it's a state park, it requires either uh, an entry fee or state park permit. And many of us have that permit, but we want to make sure that people are not penalized or can't attend just because they don't have that um, immediate access. So we'll carpool in. So, and also by going in at seven, we'll uh, get there in and out before the heat of the day really 
uh, begins to pick up. So yes, it's seven o'clock, but my experience has been in living in Colorado that seven o'clock is not early for many Coloradans uh, because they want to get out and back um, before the heat hits. So uh, again, more information will be coming out about that. Jim Ives, person of Jim Ives is a volunteer out at Roxboro and he will be with us and will help us understand some of the unique geological stuff that's going on out there. Um, and that will be our uh, altars in the world for that day. So look forward to that. Um, I wanna go back now and, and make some comments about what happened um, on Sunday, this last Sunday. Um, I'm so grateful to the Reverend Deacon, the Dean Pope and the team that she pulled together for the great, great, great gathered and gifted uh, lunch and discussion that we had uh, on Sunday following the main service there. Uh, about 75 people gathered to share ideas about their gifts and talents and hopes, uh, how they might offer these um, for the wider church uh, and for this congregation. The energy in the parish hall was great. Uh, the buzz and just the, the level of conversation and movement people were up and putting things up on, on the walls. We've left all of that stuff up on the wall. So if you weren't here, um, uh, come in on Sunday and just walk around and look at all of the things that people saw as their gifts, what they'd like to learn, what they'd like to teach, all of that sort of stuff. Um, it filled that room. Um, the energy filled the room, the Holy Spirit filled the room, and it was just fabulous. And we're gonna work to pull all of that information together in some sort of workable way uh, to carry us forward um, through the summer and then into the fall and beyond. So it was great. It was a great day. There were people who were in attendance who had been parishioners at Good Shepherd for decades. And there were people who had been parishioners for months, just a few months, all of them in there and having a wonderful, wonderful conversation. The food was fabulous, um, provided by a local nonprofit. Uh, details of that will come out shortly uh, and, and were, were published. I just can't, don't have it right here off the top of my head. Um, but it was fun. It was it was wonderful. So thank you again to uh, the team that planned it and will carry that forward. But also to all of you who uh, brought uh, your energy and your ideas and your prayers to that that wonderful event. I'd like to close because uh, with with a reference to um, one of the lesser known apostles, that being Barnabas, uh, Saint Barnabas, whose feast day was on. Uh, the 11th of June, so the day just before Trinity Sunday and our gathered and gifted. Um, Barnabas, uh, known, uh, called the son of encouragement, um, but also known uh, for his act of, of generosity that uh, in those early days of the church, he sold a piece of property and brought it, uh, brought the proceeds to the church. Um, for the, the good of, of that community. And in so doing, um, you know, very much set an example for many of us that all that we have, and I'm not talking about property in that kind of way, but all that we have, our gifts and our talents are really ours for uh, God's use in this world, um, whether it's spreading the gospel or taking care of the poor, which is spreading the gospel, but preaching the gospel or taking care of the poor, taking care of one another, those are all things for which we've been equipped um, through the gifts of the Spirit. And so um, I, I was struck by the, uh, by the closeness and proximity and time of the Feast of St. Barnabas and, and our gathered and gifted. And so in that spirit, I'd like to close um, today with the collect for the Feast of St. Barnabas. Um, I read this collect at the uh, 745 service, but it didn't fit um, in, the, in the later service. So this is the collect for the Feast of um, Feast of St. Barnabas. Grant, O oh God, that we may follow the example of your faithful servant Barnabas, who, seeking not his own renown, but the well being of your church, gave generously of his life and substance for the relief of the poor and for the spread of the gospel. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Look forward to seeing you soon. Have a great rest of the week.